Special Journals Subsidiary Ledgers Part 2. This time we are going to use the Special Journals. Um, it would be helpful if you've already seen Part 1 of this, but I'm not sure absolutely necessary. Well, at least it'd be very helpful if you saw the first few minutes of Part 1 so that you got um, went through the instructions and, and followed through with that. All right, well now what I'm going to do is take the transactions and paste the transactions into the appropriate journal. In part one, we put all transactions in the general journal. But what I would like to talk about now are the special journals. And one of the pages I suggested you print out was the summary. Now if I look at the summary here, it's in a different position for you, it's further at the back, but I just put it next to this for convenience at this stage. You'll see a decision process for, deci for deciding what special journal an item goes in. So there's four questions. The first question you asked is the transaction, does it involve a credit sale? And if the answer is yes, it goes in the sales journal. In one sense, it would be more helpful to think of this as the credit sales journal because that's what it records, credit sales and only credit sales. Stop, pause, stop again. Alright, go again. Um, if, you, if the sale is a credit sale, you enter it in the sales journal. If it's not, you then ask the question, is it a credit purchase? Uh, have, have you purchased something on credit? And if that's the case, it goes in the purchases journal. And again, you could think about in the short run of calling that the credit purchases journal because the only thing that goes in there are credit purchases. If um, it's not one of those, you ask, does a transaction involve a receipt of cash, i.e. Does, you, does your bank account increase? Do you get money and you put that money in the bank and your bank account goes up? If that's the case, it's a cash receipts journal. Or does it involve a payment? From you. Now, you know, have you written a check, done electronic funds transfer? Um, then if that's the case, it goes in the cash payments journal. These two journals together are often referred to as the cash book. So if you've heard people talking about in small business particularly, talking about the cash book, what's the cash book? It's the cash receipts journal and the cash payments journal. As you can see, there's also a relationship between um, the credit sales special journal and the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger. We will have to come back and look at this later. But any item that goes in the sales journal must also be recorded in the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger. Hold on, I'll stop again. Right, uh, continuing again. Um, similarly, if an item goes in the credit purchases journal, or the purchases journal, it must also be an entry in the accounts payable subsidiary ledger. So let's have a look at this. If you make a sale on credit, well that's an account receivable, and the account receivable subsidiary ledger gives you the individual information on um, who you've made the sales to and how much each person owes you. If you make a purchase on credit, so you've purchased something on credit, then you must also enter that in the accounts payable subsidiary ledger. What does that mean? Well, that's a list of all the accounts you owe, of all the things you need to pay. I might just show a quick look of ones we've got here. Subsidiary ledgers. Uh, similarly in the assignment C, we've got subsidiary ledger, accounts receivable. So they're a list of um, all our clients, in this case three clients. And accounts payable, being our suppliers. Um, and we have three suppliers. I don't. So now let me get back to transactions. Now we need to make a decision about what each of these transactions, what journal they're going to go into. So if we go through the tests, and again you might have this printed out in front of you, the question is, is this a credit sale? So you sell inventory on credit. Yes, that's a credit sale that will go in the sales journal. Next item, sell inventory on credit. Is it a credit sale? 
you have sold inventory on credit yes that is a credit sale third item pay inventory of two thousand dollar pay freight in of two thousand dollars is um, that a sale or inventory? Well, let me cut out all the questions we'll go straight to it that's payment of freight that's going to be a cash payment cash payments journal next item per purchase inventory on credit so you purchase inventory on credit is a credit purchase that's the purchases journal the next item is sell inventory on credit sales journal next item sell inventory on credit sales journal remember I said it might be helpful for you in the short run at least to um, call these credit sales journal and credit purchases journal now issue a credit note for two thousand dollars I'm going to leave that one for the moment because um, well, I'm going to leave it. receive cash payment so you receive cash so that goes in the cash receipts journal now that is a little bit deceptive and I've done that I guess to highlight the point you receive cash it's got in there words cash payment so just in case you're not awake you might see cash payment and think uh -huh, cash payments go in the cash payments journal well, they do but in this case you've received a payment of cash you've received cash you put money in the bank your bank will go up that's a cash receipt you receive cash again cash receipt the next item down you receive cash cash receipts journal you pay rent expense is you pay it as a cash payments journal and you sell inventory on credit you make a credit sale that's the sales journal so you can see there that these are the special journals that um, you will enter now if you go to chapter 8 of the textbook if you want to read more about this chapter 8 I'll see if I'll find your page number I'm just flicking through the book now um, cash receipts journal sales journal um, the start of special journals is on page 327 and then the first one on page 328 is using the sales journal so you might want to go there and look now let's write these transactions up so we're going to write them up not in the general journal this time but in the special journals now how do we write them up in the special journals first transaction was January 1 the account debited if you've got that list printed out you'll see it's to client 1 the invoice number was 1 now let me explain um, something else by going to the general journal now let's have a look at the general journal if we look at all those transactions for a credit sale it was debit accounts receivable credit revenue the next sale we had was debit accounts receivable credit revenue the next sale we had was debit accounts receivable credit revenue so here's the beauty of special journals they know that every sale, every credit sale we have will be debit accounts receivable credit revenue in this case it's been called sales but it's debit accounts receivable credit revenue our first sale was for $40,000 so that will be $40,000 and that's the that is equivalent to what putting that 40,000 in that column is equivalent to writing out debit accounts receivable 40,000 credit revenue 40,000 pity I didn't call the, the sales but to say this is either sales or revenue sales and revenue are, um, equivalent now there's one other item we need to put the cost of goods sold and if we go back and we look at the same issue every item for cost of goods sold and inventory was the same debit cost of goods sold 32,000 and you may remember how we calculated this we 
were given that our gross profit was 20%, therefore our cost of goods sold was 80%, so we just multiplied 40,000 by 80% to give us the 32,000. So we go back to the special journal of sales and we'll see that is 32,000. Now we have January 2, sale to client 2. This was to client 1. This is invoice number 2. And the sale was $10,000. Therefore, we know the cost of sales is going to be 80% of that, so that's $8,000. Again, you can go back to the general journal and check it. Next entry we had was January 5. We made a sale to client one. One, and it was a sale of $30,000, so it'll be invoice three. It's 30,000, 80% of 30,000 is 24,000. So we have debit accounts receivable, credit sales 30,000, and we also have debit cost of goods sold, credit inventory 24,000. We now go to January 5. We made a sale on, it wasn't January 5, it was January 6. We made a sale to client one. I'll just check that. We made a sale to client three. Invoice number four. The sale amount was $5,000. 80% of that is $4,000. And the final credit sale we made was January 11. To client one. I'll check on that to client one. Client one, invoice number five, it was for an amount of $8,000, um, 80% of 8,000 is 6,400. Now we total these up, sum of this column. And we do the same to the next column, we sum that column. And so now we can see that these are the journal entries, where these are the journals that we're now going to post into the general ledger. So let me go to the general ledger. I'm going to post debit accounts receivable, credit sales. So general ledger, I'll go to the general ledger solution. I'll just make these columns a bit smaller. So we can see information here. Well, maybe just make this a tad smaller. Right. So what are we going to do now? Here is um, we're going to post the special journal of sales journal to the general ledger. So one. No, this will be 31 January. 31 January. Um, explanation, well, we don't really need an explanation here because it's the, the reference will give us the explanation. We'll call this sales one, S1, and we're going to debit $93,000. $93,000, because that was the total from the sales journal. If you look here, debit $93,000, and that will mean our balance is $93,000. Now, what we can see is we end up with the same balance as going through the journals individually. Now let's go down and do the other side of the transaction, which was um, sales. And so 31 Gen, reference S1, credit $93,000, balance $93,000 credit, and again, we can see the balance here is 93,000 compared to 93,000 here. Yet here, we've only had to do one line. 
in the general ledger, whereas here there was five, and that was only five transactions. If we had 100 transactions, it would have been 100 lines. If we had 1,000 transactions, 1,000 lines. But here, it would remain as one. Let's do, or it's one other important thing to do, is to go back and to show that we've posted these items. So 401 is sales, and 101 is accounts receivable. So we have debited the account of 101, and we've credited 401. And we signify that by writing those numbers at the bottom of the column. 101 slash 401 indicates that we've posted a $93,000 debit, because debit's from the left, to 101, and a $93,000 credit, because credit's from the right, to 401. We have also posted, and we'll see the account numbers, general ledger solution, um, 105, oh, we haven't posted them, right, I better post those now. So, also at the same time, 31st of January, reference, sales journal 1, <coughs> debit, right, we better go back and look. Well, I've left something out. Oh, just, we have to put in an opening balance. 1, Jen, we had an opening balance. Opening balance. Of two hundred thousand debit. Now, uh, S one. Let's go back and see the amount. Special journals was seventy four thousand four hundred. Seventy four thousand four hundred credit. Seventy four thousand four hundred credit. So inventory was a credit. It went down. So if we now take. 200,000, we've got a credit entry in there because it went down and we see we have a debit balance in the end of 125,600. Compared to a debit balance of 125,600 using the general journals. The other side of that transaction is cost of goods sold, 74,400. And so we go 31 Gen, S1, Debit 74,400 and the balance is 74,400. And that will be a debit balance. And again, we can see we come up with the same answer as we did previously, except this time we've used the special journals and the special journal sales. Now, we signify we've posted that by going to See that the debit was 501 and the credit was 105. So debit 501, 501, credit 105. And what does that mean? Well, to cost of goods sold account, which is account number 501, we've posted a debit of 74,400. And to inventory account, which is account number 105, we've posted a credit of 74,400. So that's the special journals, and that's the special journal of sales. There's still another thing we need to do. Okay? We need to now post these individual items to the subsidiary ledgers. Right out. So let's have a look at how we post these. And you would have had to do this step um, with the general journal as well, which we didn't do with the general journal because I saved it all up for here. So let's see, we go to client one, they had um, a sale on January 1 of $40,000. So client one, January 1, reference was uh, S1, $40,000 purchase they had, balance is $40,000 debit. Now, to indicate that we've posted that to here, we come back to the sales journal and we put a T in there. Once we would have put a tick, but it's much easier to put a T, so we put a T. Next journal is client two, $10,000 into their subsidiary ledger. Client two, January one, sales journal one, 
$10,000 sale. So their balance is $10,000. So they owe us $10,000. Client 2 owes us $10,000. Client 1 owes us $40,000. Now go back and look at the next transaction. It was to client 1 and it's for $30,000. So back to client 1. January 1. No, January 5. Sales journal 1. The amount was 30000 The balance is now 70000 Debit. Let me look at the next transaction. Sixth is client 3 and it's for $5,000. So I go down to client 3. January 1. No, no, no. January 6. Got this wrong. This was January 1. January 6. Client 2. That must have been January 2. Reference S1. It's a debit of 10000 let me check what it was. A debit of five thousand dollars. Debit five thousand. Balance five thousand. Debit. And then client one on the eleventh, the last transaction, January eleven. Client one eleven thousand. S one. And the amount was eight thousand dollars. Eight thousand dollars. So they now owe seventy-eight thousand debit. Now, one thing that I do need to point out is that there could have been payments in here, which would have reduced their balance, but we've only recorded the sales so far. So not ideal, but at least this way I can fit them into um, bite-sized blocks. So we go down here and we see the balances of the accounts are this. We have a balance of 78,000 plus a balance of 10,000 plus a balance of 5,000. So that's $93,000 total. So now we need to go to the general ledger control account. And so we go to accounts receivable in the general ledger and let's see what that amount is. General ledger, accounts receivable and we see that balance is $93,000. So and there's our control account. Our control account does agree with the subsidiary ledger. What does this mean? So we go back to the general ledger We've got $93,000 that people owe us, accounts receivable. What is that made up of? Well, it's made up of $78,000 from client one, $10,000 from client two, and $5,000 from client three. So that's the start of uh, the subsidiary ledgers and the start of special journals. And it deals with the relationship between the sales journal and the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger. And it also deals with the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger and the control account in the general ledger, which is the um, accounts receivable account. So one thing I hope you noticed as we work through here is how much less work it is using special journals. Um, we had a lot less to write for the general for the each journal entry, but then the big saving really comes when we post at the end. We're just posting one amount. This also becomes significant in using your general ledger because the less transactions you have in here, the easier it will be to find things. So this is a good way of grouping things together. Provide the audit trail back through um, the total here, S1, through to special journal one, sorry, sales journal one, we've called it S1. Um, and now we can trace that back to the $93,000 there, indicate 101 that it's posted. Right, time to finish this and the last video I'll put together number three we'll look at the other transactions um, and some things that will be relevant for there will be um, allowing for discount 
and there will also be um, the payment of uh, some accounts. So cash receipts will be when someone pays off an account. I don't thank you. See you again soon.